Hello from Coleman and Company. We are here with Michael and we are going to talk about pressing a spangle onto a garment. What's the right way to do it? What's the right time, temperature, pressure, all of that to make sure that you get perfect spangle presses every single time. Are we ready to go, Michael? Check, we're ready. We've got a heat press, we're ready to go. Okay, so the first step is we're going to set our heat press to 288 degrees, and that should be between 285 and 290 is the magic number. So 288 is right about in the middle. Right about in the middle. Check. We're there. Okay. Then we're going to set our timer to 12 seconds. That's our dwell time. Check. We're there. Okay. The next step is we recommend a Nomex heat pad on the bottom platform of your heat press. We actually have that under our Teflon wrap. So you got your bottom lower platen with the rubber pad. Nomex heat pad is under here, and we've got a Teflon wrap. Okay, and what's the reason for a Teflon wrap? Well, oftentimes you want to keep the bottom of the heat press from getting sticky with any substance you're putting on it, anything you're using, but it also helps in what they call threadability. You can move the t-shirt over the bottom of your lower platform a lot quicker and easier with less hang-ups. Okay, great. Now we need to talk about pressure. We need to adjust the pressure to a high pressure. High pressure, got it. What pressure, Mark? So on a heat press like we're using now, which, which heat press do you have there? I've got a Stahl's Hotronics Fusion. Fantastic press. The pressure goes from 0 to 10. I'm currently at a 4. Okay. What should I do? So we should bump that up bump to up. a 7. Understood. I've turned it twice. Let's see where it lands. I'm at 6. I'm assuming we put a t-shirt in there. We're going to be at a 7, but I'm going to give it a, just a little bit of a more turn. I think we're pretty good here. Seven. Okay, great. Now, what if you have a heat press that uses PSI? Do you have a number PSI, on that? PSI, you want to think about, um, about a number times 10, so 70 to 80 PSI for Spangle if you're using an air press. Okay, great. And then what if you've got no measurement on your heat press? What's a good way to gauge? Yeah, you're not tickling the spangles. You're not going to just simply be doing this and then pulling it down. You want to give it a, a good, firm pull down. Not that it'll take you off the ground, but you want to put a little body weight into it, a little, little shoulder action. That works. Okay, very good. Now, our heat press is set. Set. Now we need to prepare our garment. Excellent. We're okay. to the table. So on the garment, the first thing we need to do is prepare the shirts. What are you doing now? I'm taking off any lint stuff I can and can't see. It helps if you have a nice little lint roller. We use ours quite a bit. And now I'm going to do what's called a pre-press. You see all these wrinkles? We're going to get rid of that. Okay. So real simple. We're not threaded on because we're just doing a simple uh, little pre-press for about four to five seconds. Okay, so if you've got a garment that might have a lot of lint on it, whether it's a particular type of garment or where it's been stored or if it's not stored in a clean environment, getting that lint dust extra off is going to help you press your Absolutely. spangles. Okay. And you won't have some stuff that you didn't see before all of a sudden get locked under a glued down spangle. So, like a piece of string. You never know. All right. So we just threaded the shirt onto the bottom of the heat press. That Nomex pad is covered. The Teflon wrap allowed us to move that shirt nice and easy on and off. We bring the neck just about even where you want it. The shoulders are where they need to be. And we are ready. But what are we going to okay. do first with the spangle design, so, Mark? So all this extra... Yeah, we don't need here. all of that transfer paper. It's going to make it harder to pull off. So we're going to trim away some extra transfer paper. It's just going to... You're going to use up a little bit of time before, but it's going to save you more time when you're going to peel it. Absolutely. We're good now. We took some extra, extra anchoring material off of there, and we're going to flip it so that it's straight. Put it where we want it. Now, why don't you, you can bring that out closer to you, right? I can. This has got a nice little drawer. You can leave this completely where it is, and you can move the drawer back and forth, which is a real nice feature of the Hotronics Fusion Press. So if you've got the ability to not work directly under the heat, mm -hmm. it's going to make your day easier. Yeah. Okay, great. So now we need, to, we need to lower the press down for 12 seconds. And then when we're done, we're going to pull it off. Mm -hmm. And when are we going to peel it? Right away? Uh, not right away. We're going to let it get to what's called a warm peel. If you were using vinyl, a hot peel is when you open up your heat press you can slide it aside or you can pull it out. Right now would be what's called a hot, a hot peel, 
We're not going to do a hot peel. We're going to do a, a warm peel. Okay, so, so not a hot peel. We're going to lay warm. it down on the table. Okay. And the surface of the table is going to help cool it. And I'm just simply going to flip it over, and I'm going to use either the sleeve. I'm going to press down a little bit on these spangles. Some people like to use, believe it or not, a spoon. They'll rub it with a spoon. But we're still at a warm press right now, so we're ready to peel. Okay. Okay, so I'm just going to grab the top here, get a little area where I can start peeling away. And once, gosh, I really trimmed this pretty good. Here we go. I needed to find a handle. Now, the direction we peel is going to be based on the design mm -hmm. or the garment. So I a little bit of both. A little bit of both. So if you've got a rib in the garment or uh, some sort of texture to the garment, you're going to want to move it in a direction that's less likely to stretch the garment while it's hot, while the glue is still that's setting right. and curing. We are good to go. All set, nice and done, a nice pretty blue. And I'll zoom in on silver. that a little bit here. All I'm right. going to come a little closer. We got a nice oh. design. I think we used this at the Nashville show this past year. It looks real sharp. Now, just some extra tips and tricks. If you happen to have a, a couple spangles that don't stick, okay, what might you do? Uh, personally, like if I had some in a given area and it was only one little area, I would trim a piece of transfer tape that had that and I would repress entirely, but hopefully just not just reheating that one spot, but I wouldn't have transfer tape in the rest of the spangle. I would really try to limit how much transfer tape is in that area. Okay, so if you missed one, you might just cut that little mm -hmm. piece out the size of a dime or a penny. Correct. Maybe stick it in place, press it for... Uh, I'd say five or six seconds. Okay, very Half good. the time is normal. Uh, you have to understand, spangles do not have a lot of glue on the back of that material. You have to have your absolute best chance of pressing it correctly the first time. Once you peel and that spangle comes up, what's on the, on the back of that spangle is lint from the t-shirt. That lint from the t-shirt is going to cover much of the glue that's still on the back of that spangle material. You want to just give your 100% best to get the right pressing for the first time. Can you press a second time? Yes, you can, and everybody's done it. Um, but you want to try your best effort to get it done the right time, first time. Yeah, okay, great. And then the last little tip is if you're working with a garment that's a particularly fluffy or has a, some piling to it, mm -hmm. and when you're peeling it, you feel that it's a little, it's almost not quite where you feel comfortable, then you could do a second press right now Absolutely, for an additional yes, few seconds, can. activate the glue again, and give it a little bit more right. of a soak into the, the garment. What we're trying to do is we're giving you like 90% of the guidelines of what you're going to come across in everything that you do. But there's always going to be a little, uh, a little change, a little tangent that you're going to have to figure out on your own. The, the spangles work. Um, these are the best directions we can provide. So 285 to 290 degree temperature window. 12 seconds at uh, medium high to high pressure, say 7, 8 on a scale of 0 to 10, and 70 to 80 PSI if you're using an air press. Okay, and just depending on the garment you're using, you may or may not have to make some slight alterations Correct. to that, depending on, because not every garment's the same, not every tote bag is the same, not every t-shirt's the same. Right. So start with this guideline and alter it if you need to. Absolutely. Okay. I said it better myself. Great. Well, thanks for watching, Michael. Thank you for demonstrating. Anytime.